And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Sky Tango from Z-Man Games. Now, Sky Tango, the sun and the moon follow the same path. They're tangling with each other, but they will never meet. It's a very sad thing here, really. Um, you're going to follow the cycles of the moon and the sun by... Okay, nonsense. This game's about playing cards with numbers on the table. It's a basically an abstract numerical game. It can be played with two players or as a partnership. Let's take a look. The game is merely made up of a small deck of cards. They're quite thin, as you can see. And in fact, it's kind of funny that they come in this box because it has two slots for regular size cards, and yet they all fit into one small slot. Well, it is what it is. These cards are going to show numbers 1 to 29 uh, during the daytime and during the night, and, and I've actually done this, you can sit down and when you put them all next to each other, create one long, cool panorama where it shows the sun coming up and the moon setting in the daytime and nighttime. There's also several cards in the deck that are eclipse cards. There's daytime and nighttime ones. Player is going to each draw a hand of five cards, and the game begins. On a player's turn, they're going to play a card either in front of themselves or in front of their opponent. Now, each player is going to have a night row in front of them and a daytime row in front of them. And so the first card can be anything you want, but the second card, let's say I add this 28, would have to come after the five. And since you can't put any cards in between cards, you see that I've kind of limited myself here. I want to play this 12, for example, and I can't because it's not before the 5 and it's not after the 28. It would have been better had I played the 12 first, and then maybe the 22, and then the 28. But of course, you can mess your opponent up. If they play something low, you can mess them up by playing a high card next set, etc. Now, you can also play an Eclipse card, again, on yourself or on your opponent. So when I play an Eclipse card, I can put that anywhere and it goes on top of another card. So now I'm basically forcing my opponent to play a number that comes between 5 and 22, which here they can do easily because they have a 10. But what if that was a 5 and this was a 7 and they played an Eclipse? Well, now I'm in trouble. And so that can be problematic. What you can do instead of playing a card on your turn is you can scoop cards up. And in this case, I can't do it. But let's say there were five cards here. It needs to be five or more cards in a row. When that happens, I just can scoop up the whole row. That's my action for the turn and place these in a basically a score pile. Also, many of the cards have animals on them. You'll notice here there's a butterfly on that card. Here there's a bird on that card. Whenever you play one of these cards, you can, you must actually, you must immediately play another card. Now when you play another card, whether it's from playing an animal or just on your turn playing a card, you cannot uh, draw another card. You must play all the cards from your hand. Once you play the fifth card, you will draw five new cards. So it is possible when you're playing cards, let's say for example, I have a 9 and a 25 here in front of me. Here are my two rows. A 9, a 25 in front of me, and these are the cards in my hand. I have an 8 and 18 at night and a 7 during the day. Now, I can't play my 7 during the day because it doesn't come before 1, it doesn't come after 14. I can't play my 18 before the 9 and after the 25. The same thing is the case with my opponent. I can't play either of these cards on his side. At that point, we have what's called a total eclipse, and I must discard everything in front of me. And that's, and then start anew. Now, this is going to keep going on. The discard pile will run out. You'll, you know, the draw pile, you'll shuffle the discards and put it back in. You'll keep going until the discard pile runs out and there's no cards to replace it with. At that point, the game will end. Every card that you have in front of you is worth a negative point. Every card that's in your hand is worth a negative point. All the cards you've collected, not Eclipse cards, but regular cards, are worth one point each. Whoever has the higher score is the winner. Now, the partnership rules work a little differently. One person has the sun line and the other person has the night line. And so if you have a total eclipse, you just wipe your own line and you can play cards with anyone and you're kind of working together. So that's an interesting way to go back and forth. And it's an interesting way to take a two player game, change it to a partnership game and add, you know, that it, it actually means something. It's not just we're working together playing a two player game. 
The game itself, the cards are beautiful. They, they look really nice. You saw them. They look great on the table. It's fun putting them out there. And the concept feels, to me, very familiar about you can only place cards at the beginning and the end. You know, if you play a 1, you shouldn't put it next to a 26. You know, maybe a 1 next to a 10. At the same time, putting a 2 next to a 3, then next to a 4 might be problematic because you can have that 4 eclipsed. If you want to leave a little bit of leeway so in case someone does eclipse you, you can play a card on top of that and recover from that eclipse. And I just found the game very interesting. If there's one problem with the visual effects, it's that those animals, when you play an animal, you must immediately play another card. So they're great. I'm not really sure if they're that useful for the game. Why do you get the, some cards let you play an extra one? It seems unfair, or sometimes actually it's bad for you. But taking that aside, we forgot to do that all the time. In the games I played, it was always forgotten because those animals are so small, they fit into the picture so well, you're like, oh, that's right, that had an animal on it. I was supposed to play an extra card. I don't know why, it just it was something that was forgotten by all the players who played the game. Um, but other than that, I found it very enjoyable. There's a bit of a kind of a push your luck. You have a row of six cards. You're like, well, I can play one more and then scoop them. But if I wait that one more turn, my opponent can play an eclipse and then I have to start over again. Also, there's that whole, as you get closer to the end of the game and you can tell when it's coming because the cards are starting to run out, you're like, oh man, I, I, I'm not going to finish my rows in time. So I'm going to start playing all my cards of my opponent to make his rows bigger, and, but not big enough that he can collect them. And there's that kind of walking to the edge feeling that the game gives you. It's not a heavy game. It's not a game that's going to have great strategy in. But I did find it a bit of a fresh look at this about playing cards in numeric order and playing cards in your opponent's side is something that's fun to do. So there's a nice level of interactiveness there. So this is one I think was pretty cool. Um, Sky Tango. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Boo! Boo!